Hey folks, this is a out of the ordinary post compared to what I've been normally posting. This video is going to be time related. I'm talking about specifically mechanical clocks. This particular clock was made by the New Haven Clock Company in Connecticut in the early 1900s. It's called a Tampa clock and it is a calendar clock. As you can see the other red hand there. I got this one from a guy off of Facebook Marketplace for $100 in non-working condition up in Folsom, California. It still has the original glass and the original steam pressed wood for the top. The bottom has been replaced, but it's hard to tell unless you're really looking. So this one has its original paper dial as well. It is time only. And I spent $220 to get this clock serviced by House of Clocks in Lodi, California. And a buddy of mine had come over and was admiring my mechanical clocks. I have two of them. And I had been on the lookout for a clock of similar price that I knew would probably need to get serviced. I don't know a whole lot about mechanical clocks, but I knew this one was old. You could tell by the dial and its paper and its the finish of the wood is really old and weathered, but it, overall it has a collector value. It's worth maybe 500 on a good day. It's not a terribly valuable clock, but I mostly wanted a vintage timepiece. You can tell it has the original peg to hold the hands in place and it's marked New Haven, Connecticut, USA on the inside of the dot. I mean, you pull the face off. So old clocks are usually marked on the dial that being said, I found out the hard way today at the thrift shop that there are certain clocks that are complete junk that are not worth fixing. But before we get into that, I'm going to show you the other clock that I've had for years, since about 2014. Bear with me as we cut away and I'll show you that so this, this particular clock is what you call a grandmother clock. It is a Daniker. And that being said, the movement is made in Germany. Uh, specifically, I don't know what the actual movement is. I know the face says Daniker, but I think the movement is another German brand. This I got for free from a friend in 2014 when their grandparents died and they were getting rid of it. I had been running it for eight years and it had never really been properly serviced. I just had a friend who kind of tinkered with clocks when I lived in Orange County, oil the movement, and it kept okay time. I have since had this clock. It is a three strike clock, hour, half hour, and quarter hour. That movement was a little bit more to service. I think this one cost 375, but it's like a 10 year thing, so you don't do it all the time. I'm gonna pan around and show you the rest of it. From the so fall. this this particular one, it has fake weights. The weights are totally decoration. They're just stapled to a cross member up underneath there. And it's got this base with little spindly legs, very mid-century. And again, this one was free, so I didn't feel terrible spending the 375 after owning it for eight years to get it serviced to make sure that it's working fine down the line. And when you lift the, oh man, I need to dust it. When you lift the lid, you can see the works right there. So here is the clock in question, folks. It is labeled in Sonia there on the dial. The time spring is okay. I've taken the face off and inspected the movement. Yes, it is Japanese and Sonia. And it does chime when it's supposed to, but the mainspring for the time is broken. And the case is solid wood all around. And it's just, it's so clean cosmetically. I love it. Even the pendulum, it's just brass brush finish it had the key and you can see now it's it's you know it's not it's not running right at all it's been running for at least five minutes but the time is not advancing because the mainspring is broken so like at first glance you think wow i mean i could tell that it was uh not antique i thought maybe 60s um but I don't know a lot about clocks. So when I took it to House of Clocks in Lodi, which I've had them service three other clocks for me, he looked at it right away and he's like, 
don't waste your money on this. It has no value at all because it's a cheap Japanese movement. And he said, that's a shame because the case is really nice and aesthetically it looks nice, but, and it's hour and half hour, it's hour strike only, but we're gonna get into what makes this, just at him being a clock guy, first glance looking at it and why it is a Japanese clock and why he says it has no real value in getting So service. if you look through the, the glass here, you will notice the little wind indicator arrows. He said that any Korean or Japanese movement, this is common, while most German and American movements that are of good quality, they don't indicate which way to turn to wind the clock. The other thing that he said that you'll notice right away that he said pointed to it being a cheap Japanese movement is it's not, the dial is not labeled. They were trying to be deceptive and not telling you where it's from because I guess in the clock world, Japanese and Korean movements have a notorious history of being junk. So therefore they don't even want to label it to where your consumer is going to see it is not of a good quality. Whereas any German or American movement, it's going to like that one that I showed you, the two that I have, they say made in Germany, made in USA. The other thing that he pointed out that was indicative of it being a cheap Japanese movement, or it actually is like what they said, it's an Ansonia American movement clone, but of a poor quality, is the hand retention nut here. He said that this threaded nut just reeked of cheap Japanese quality, whereas if it was vintage American, it would have a dowel pin like you saw the one that I showed a little bit earlier, or a highly polished, maybe painted to match the hands so it would be blended in more. And this one is just kind of crude and rudimentary. And sure enough, um, we knew it wasn't really old because of all the, the dial plate pins are Phillips screws which it's a shame because of it, it chimes really nice as you will see when I strike it. It does the half hour chime and then so it sounds nice. It's just, he said it would be anywhere from three to $400 to get this properly serviced and replace the mainspring. And I had talked to another shop in Turlock to get their opinion and he, kind of gave me the similar information, except for he said it would be between four and $500 to get that service. other clock shop, clock shop kind of went a little bit deeper than House of Clocks did because if he was just like, it's junk, don't waste your money because I care about you as a customer. Don't invest money in fixing this. It's not worth it unless you really have a lot of sentimental attachment to this clock, which in this case, I had just picked it up at a thrift shop, didn't really have a lot of attachment for it. And he was just like, this is a candidate for putting in a quartz movement battery operated and then just give it to your friend so he never has to worry about it, which to me would defeat the purpose of owning a mechanical clock. Part of the process is winding it every eight days, regulating it by adjusting the pendulum. That's part of the fun of it. And just switching it to quartz wouldn't have been to me, I don't know, I would rather just go find another vintage American clock and pass that on to him as a gift. So with that being said, the other clock shop in Turlock they said that the Japanese just at this point in their clock making history didn't really have good production value. You see that in the early days of Toyota, the earlier Toyotas weren't as good of a quality as they kind of got later in their production. They refined their process and they became what they are today. Whereas this, he said they did not maintain their manufacturing after the war. They were kind of just pumping out cheap crap that didn't really have a lot of value. And then he said, furthermore, they sold their works to the Russians later on when they were getting out of the clock business. This Ansonia company then went to Russia where it's still stamped Japanese movement, but it's made in Russia. The quality went even further down. And he said that the polished pivots are just not very good. Overall, they, the clock repair person has to work a lot harder to tighten, tweak this to get it to keep good time and run well compared to just buying a vintage American clock from the 1900s right off the bat, better build quality. So that was a sad lesson that I learned. I lost $100 buying this. He said that basically the value is in the case. Mechanism, throw it away. So that's my sad tale. Buyer beware. I don't think the thrift shop was trying to be deceitful. 
they don't really know a lot about clocks. They put it behind the counter. It said non-running $99. So lesson learned. But maybe if you're watching this video, that was the advice from the clock shop. Look for stamp dials made in the USA, specifically where it's made sometimes, like my other clock says made in Connecticut or made in Germany. Those are the ones you want to keep an eye out for. If it's not marked or has little indicators to the wind, it's Korean or Japanese, steer clear. Until next time, we'll see you then.